This is how to play Wake Me Up When September Ends by Green Day. This is part of the Andy Guitar Band Programme, which is a kind of pretentious title for just saying that you can play along to my band at the end of this video if you wish, and many people I hope will find that beneficial, especially if you're new to playing along to full songs or you want to see how certain sections are done and you might be struggling currently to put everything together and learn full songs and you want to see how that can be done, especially if you want to play in a band. It's going to be really fun. Um, this is another example of a song where we've got an easy a beginner version and a full as Green Day do it kind of version. Um, we do need a clean sound and then a more overdriven sound. So uh, the more overdriven sound on um, that you're hearing now is from the Boss Katana. That's on the brown sound setting, which does a pretty good Green Day style um, amp sound for the heavier stuff. And then the cleaner one that you're hearing is actually the crunch sound with the gain all the way down to zero, literally at zero just to really clean it up, but still have a little bit of bite on it. You could even move your pickup selector to select both pickups, or just move it to select the net pickup. which will also clean it up as well. Of course, that's an acoustic part, and I highly encourage any of you guys that have acoustic guitars only and you don't have an electric, strum along to this one. This is an accessible course, and I want to encourage everybody to play along and learn these songs. I think that would be really fun. Let's begin this tutorial from the heavier section where the drums kick in and the uh, louder electric guitars kick in, because it is far easier than some of the more intricate picking, and I think a lot of you guys will have a lot of success learning this heavier part first. I think it's a good way to learn the song. So, we have the main. We have the main riff played like that, which is essential on a G chord. That is by using a C bar chord and a C minor bar chord. You could do that without barring, as I will show you how to do the riff in uh, a couple of minutes. You know, the more acoustic riff. And this is only a power chord, so we're not actually barring with that first finger of the muting the thinner three strings in total. Picking strings four, three, and two. And this is just the G chord, and then the picking pattern stays the same, but the other notes descend from three, from the fifth fret to the fourth fret, second, and then open. We need that first finger to then move and play the last note, and the third finger hits that highest uh, D note. And then the Billy Joe way of playing this would be with full bar chords, major, then minor, and then to a G power chord. Or we have... This way where we just play strings two, three, and four, and then we don't need to bar. And that's a G power chord, and if you don't like that G power chord, you could even play a G5 if you wanted to. In total, that would make easier option, although the first half is the same. And then demoing the bar chords at the end. Remembering how light you can press onto these chords when you're doing bar chords. 
I'm really not pressing down or I'm pressing down very lightly here from a well set up guitar and good positioning of these bar chords, especially with overdrive, you can press down really lightly. And if you're playing that on acoustic guitar, you probably have to press down an awful lot harder. Acoustic guitar is a lot harder with bar chords and things like that. Let's go on to the next section now, the heavier section, which uh, we may want to do the G power chord like this, to stretch down to this, which is a G slash F sharp. And let me just play it for you. So this is after Wake Me Up When September Ends. Here comes the rain again, falling from the stars. Same thing again. We're finishing on the D power chord. And then back to that riff. Which, after that power chord, slide that third finger back. All those guitar parts would get us from the heavier section when the drums kick in and the distorted guitars kick in, all the way up to the guitar solo. So let's go for that now, then we'll look at the cleaner section for the introduction, and then we'll look at the guitar solo last. Really advise that you go for the guitar solo in this one. It is quite easy, but uh, there's nothing easy about stitching all of this together. It is a long song to learn with lots of different, sometimes fiddly sections to it. So go easy on yourselves, but here's probably the easiest section as a whole. Watch this first of all, then have a go at playing along to it, a couple of attempts maybe, and then we'll learn the rest of the song after this next clip. As my memory rests, but never forgets what I lost, wake me up when September ends. So that's that middle section of the song which is so important, it's essentially all the rhythm guitar parts to this heavier section. Um, let's have a look at the picking for the introduction now and then we'll have a look at the solo. So the first half of this riff, this descending pattern, is exactly as the record as Billy Joe Armstrong would play it. We then have an easier beginner way to play the next couple of chords without having to bar, so no need for bar chords. And we're back to the opening part. Or the more to the record, or as Billy Joe plays it, which does involve bar chords. So you've got those two options there, I'm going to show you both, and there'll be tab linked to in the description below. So the riff begins with exactly the same pattern, picking string 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, and this is essentially another way of playing a G chord, but then the lowest note is going to descend from the 5th fret, 4th fret, 
second fret and then the open and that needs to be played using the following fingers and most importantly keeping these fingers right on the tips because we always need that third string ringing out especially here that third finger these fingers all need to be really curled over because if they're flat we'll start to get that sound easier option which is the one that I demo um, and that I did with the band again just to prove a point really that it can sound absolutely fine with these easier beginner options like I've done with a few of these songs and that was again the exact same pattern as we start but with the three notes we're playing out of a C major, first finger then moving to the fourth fret uh, of the second string to make this kind of a C major to C minor, but much easier for beginners. And then the same chord that we started with at the start of the song, picking the same strings as well, again, making it much easier, hopefully for some beginners to learn. Then, importantly, we lift off here and play, I would play the second and third string to give us time to change, which is also what we do for the full proper version. In total, full proper way that Billy Joe plays it, typically anyway. So that's a C bar chord, third fret, to the C minor chord, to a G, uh, G5 still but the open chord G, the rock G as we've covered already in this series. Same pattern again, but on the C minor. And then to the G power chord, and at the end there actually. Hit the open second and third string, and then go down for that G chord. Then we have this secondary section, even in the introduction, this is still, you know, acoustic basically. Um, after that's happened twice, we have this other section. All of this is then repeated with heavier guitars later on, so this is the um, important part. All of this is then repeated later on, quite similar, but this uh, first section with the clean guitars, after... Wake me up when September ends We descend down to the F sharp. Same pattern throughout all these chords really, but we'd have E minor, B minor, C major, then the G that we played before. Same thing again. C, and then D. And that would be played like this. Okay, 
Couple of easier options. I know this B minor bar chord is going to put a lot of people off, especially seeing as I started this tutorial saying that we could do it without bar chords. So we have this B minor seven, which is just a great option. Just to use instead of that bar chord, if you wish. Or we have this. You take your choice which one you do. So hopefully that's something that you can pick out, pun intended. But now let's have a look at the solo. This is very easy if you found that picking and the rhythm part there is a struggle or even some of the chords and the bar chords a struggle. This solo should be something that you can do. So we begin, middle two fingers, fingers two and three, on strings two and three, at the twelfth fret. And the picking pattern is pretty much the same. It's kind of personal preference, I guess, whether you want them both to ring out or not. I like them both down. Move into this first finger. This would be the second chord. Because they are kind of, the lead guitar is kind of playing chords here. That will move up by one fret. Back to where you were, and back to this one. So we kind of have positions wise first position, second, third. And then fourth, back to where we were. On the repetition, first position and second are the same. For the third, same position but we use different fingers, first and second, so that we can get then go, so that we can then put the little finger to the 15th fret, while the first finger is at 12th, and then it moves down to 11. is when it changes, so... For the final time... And once you've got that picking pattern, should be fairly straightforward. Here's one demo, and the link to the tab is in the description if you would want it. Two, three, Four. Um, that's all sections to this wicked, wicked song. Um, all the little changes and things where I'm changing sound or, or changing how I'm playing it for the different sections should be very clear from this band take and the play along that we're about to go for now. So this is the full version, including that cleaner section at the start, which you can play along to on acoustic, and you can play along to the whole thing on acoustic if you want. And all the all the sections shown, including the solo, this is a long song. It's the longest one of all these band takes. So I hope you can get this one along to this live recording. I hope the visuals really help you. Here it comes. This is Wake Me Up When September Ends. <laughs> Summer has come and 
fast The innocence can never last Wake me up when September ends Like my father's come to pass Seven years have gone so fast Wake me up when September ends There you go guys i hope that was fun for you let me know how that went in the comments did you struggle with it was there something that you found problematic let me know about it i'll try and help you did it go well let me know has this whole program inspired you to be in a band uh you know let me know how things are going in the comments below and i'll be sure to respond give it a like give it a thumbs up share with your friends and you can check out more videos from this series for free right now